Alright, so on my bench here is my ANET A8 3D printer, and this Ultra RC video is going to be all about it. First we're going to build it, then we're going to review it, should you buy this thing in 2019, we'll do some upgrades, and then that'll be it. So let's crack right into this awesome Ultra RC video. Alright, so like I said, first we're going to build this thing up, but um, you may be wondering how am I going to build it if it's already built, so um... That might be a problem, but I've got a solution to this. But first up, for those who just want to see the review part of this video, well, basically, I love this printer. It's an absolutely awesome printer. And I can prove it to you because, well, i got another one. And that's what we're going to build right now. So let's crack right into it. All right, now we'll actually build it.
Alright guys, so three hours later, I just finished building the ANIT A8 3D printer and now we can start the review part of this awesome Ultra RC video. So should you buy the ANIT A8 3D printer in 2019? Well basically, I think you should. Let me start from the very beginning. Basically, it is super easy to build. Like It's very plug and play. Um, the instruction manual is very detailed. You've got step by step. Anyone will be able to build it. It's, it's not hard at all. You don't really need to know much about this to put it together. And if you if you get stuck, there's lots of people that have these. They mass produce these crazily. And there's lots of build videos and help videos and online chats and things that you can work out and get your 3D printer working. Now, I think that this is an absolute bargain of a 3D printer. At 150 AU dollars on eBay, or 105 US dollars, that makes this pretty much the cheapest printer out there. And you'd think from the cheapest printer out there that the print quality might not be that great. Now I've printed quite a lot of things, but check this out. This is a whole 3D printed RC plane. And you print it in lots of pieces. It takes 8 hours to print the front, 6 hours for the rear, and 12 hours for each side. And then you have your own 3D printed remote control plane. And if you crash this, which doesn't really happen, but you should watch the video on this, then you can just print another one out and fly it around. This is totally fine. It's just a fuselage that's keep destroyed. Ah, oh, see Messerschmitt. Sponsored by Glue. No joke. This is a Messerschmitt from 3D Lab Print. You can download the files and print it out yourself on your own 3D printer. And the print quality of this is the point of this is basically there's nothing wrong with this 3D printer. To get the cheapest 3D printer out there and to get this quality of 3D print, there's nothing wrong with it. And that is n so the print quality is not a reason that you shouldn't get this ANET A8. And that is one of the reasons why I didn't buy this many years ago. $150 3D printer, as if it's going to make a good quality. But there's nothing wrong with this quality. I'll show you some, some quick video now of this. So the print quality that this thing can produce is absolutely fine, and that is not one of the reasons that you shouldn't get this 3D printer. If you're worried about it being able to print something, it can print fine. From my experience, I've got two of them. They both print perfectly, and yeah, I think you should get one. Now, what are the bad things about this? Surely there's something wrong with it. Well, there are a few things. Basically, it's very noisy, which isn't ideal, and it is pretty large. If you're only printing little things, you might want something smaller. But I think having a big build platform like this is a great plus. Lots of printers don't can't build something this large. And um, one of the other downsides to this, though, I keep talking about positives and negatives. As you saw in the build video, um, this box on the back here, the power supply, has the power from the wall, 220 volts or something, going right into it, and that's not so good to be playing with. If, you, if you're new to building stuff and whatnot, it's not so safe to be connecting the actual power after that. So that is pretty dangerous. Now some people would say that getting a kit 3D printer is a bit of a negative because you've got to build it and you can't really make stuff straight away. But I think making the 3D printer is a great process. You learn how it works and it makes the whole thing a lot quicker because you learn how the whole thing's put together and then it, when you're having problems printing something, then you can work out what's going wrong because you know how the whole thing's put together. If you just buy a printer and it's not working, you're like, now what? And like I said, the support of this thing's amazing. There's so many videos out there on how to fix it up and you can print stuff for it to make it print absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with it. If you've got any more questions about this 3D printer, comment down below. I'm happy to help you guys out. But basically, um, let's move on to the upgrades part of this video, and we can talk about what you can do to this 3D printer to make it even better. Most of them don't really do much, but you can do it. Like this cable chain here I just printed for this one. You put the cables in it for the hotbed here. Now they're just loose and they wobble around and they hit the frame, which isn't so good. It's not good for... It's not long term, whereas this cable chain here, you just print it out. It does take a while, but you plug it in, the cables go inside, and it looks a lot neater and everything. And it's just an easy upgrade, and it's cool because the printer makes it for itself, which I think is a great plus. So let's move on. I'll get the other 3D printer and show you what I've put on it to make it awesomer. Alright, so this here is the first ANET A8 I built, and I've done lots of upgrades on it because I've had it for nearly half a year now. So I'm just going to go through them now to show you what I've done. So we've got the Y cable chain here which protects the heated bed from rubbing on the frame and that's an easy upgrade and the, obviously the ANA 8 prints it out itself so it prints parts for itself got another cable chain here for the x-axis just recently that I did on the new printer for these mounts so I've got the flyer one there we've got these are all the, oh, we've got this other one for all the tools that the ANA 8 comes with 
I just recently put this new Bowden mount on here so that it gets rid of the whole the stepper motor is off the X axis so it's a lot lighter because the more weight you have the more like momentum you have basically and um, if it's lighter then when it changes direction it's gonna be better for it and easier so that's a new 3D printed Bowden extension there we 3D printed the motor stepper motor mount up the top there so the motor can stay there we've got these little anti wobble brackets here which is probably doesn't do much but on higher prints it probably does um, got a little different Z stop here so when the printer goes down we can adjust it more with a screw I've got a tensioner behind the um, on the x-axis that belt's pretty loose and you just cable tie it on but I've got a tensioner there so you can tighten it with a screw as well that's pretty awesome um, yeah I've got these little 3d printed nuts here so you can adjust the bed easier so when you print them you print them up and then you tell it to pause to print halfway you put the nut in and then it prints over it so the print's actually got a nut inside which is pretty cool um, I got a, lots of filament um, holders and things so that stuff doesn't go everywhere there's this little bracket here I need another one to go there actually but this one holds the frame because the frame is a pretty wobbly frame um, what else have we got? Well, one of the biggest things will be the MOSFETs behind here so there's two MOSFETs one for the heater and one for the um, heated bed that just takes the power out of the of the main board and lets the power go through the just sort of shortcuts of that section which stops it from overheating and less of a fire hazard and things like that but yeah overall if you've got any questions about this 3d print um let me know i'll happy to help you out but for now that was the build video and the review video um yeah thanks for watching this awesome ultra c video and i'll see you around later